Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's Code Along. Um, today, we're going to be making an arcade game, and we're going to try and remake the classic uh, Google Chrome T-Rex running game. So let me see. We've got 34 uh, of our coders logged in, and then we have another 15, it looks like, that uh, are joining us. So you're all very welcome today. Um, oh, I haven't set up my screen. I'll do that in a minute. Um, so just a little bit of housekeeping before we get going. So we had some code alongs, not last Saturday, but the Wednesday before. And I just want to give out the uh, micro bits for the people who entered the competition. So um, as with all our code alongs, what we do is at the end, if you want to uh, continue on with the project and put your own idea in it and then submit it in, we'll choose one of those and then we send out a micro bit. I don't even have a micro bit. Um, I have, oh, I have one plugged in the car. So we give out a micro bit um, to a winner. So let's just um, go into present mode. So we did two different code along. So for the six to nine year olds, oh, my screen has kind of gone funny. Um, for the six to nine year olds, we did a pris, no, we did an arcade dodge game. Um, and the winner of that, um, of that is Codes Dan. So Codes Dan, here, let me refresh. Uh, submitted a very good project for our car dodge game. So Codes Dan will uh, send an email to find out what address to send your microbit out to. And then the other uh, project that we did was for uh, Prison Break. And we, again, we had some great entries submitted, but the one that we've chosen is Luna's. So let me refresh. So Luna has kind of designed a kind of rainbow character and different levels. And you seem to be able to collect bombs in the game. Um, and it's really good. So well done, Luna. Again, we'll we'll find out what address to post your micro bit out to. So well done to Code Dan and Luna for those. Okay, so on to today and what we're going to be doing. We're going to be making or trying to remake the, the classic Google Chrome uh, offline offline game. So if your Wi-Fi ever goes out, you know, puts in that little Dino T Rex game where you can uh, where you can run along and jump over the cactuses. Cacti, cactuses, I'm not sure what's the plural of cactus. Um, so I'll show you the finished projects that we're gonna be doing. So this is what we're gonna be doing. So you're going to have a little uh, dinosaur T-Rex. As you can see, his little uh, animation uh, as he's running along. And we're gonna design a map. And you'll run along during the map and press the space bar to jump over. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So let me close that down. Okay, so just quickly before we do get started, I'll just run through how this kind of works. So if you're new to code alongs and you're wondering how you kind of follow along and uh, how it all works. So at the moment, you will see me in the little YouTube box up here. So the way it works is I will demonstrate a step. So when I demonstrate a step, if you want to go into full screen um, and you'll get a nice clear picture of my screen and you'll see this, the code that I add or whatever I'm doing for that step. And then if you want to come out of full screen and then you'll have another tab open for your project for putting in the code. So if you put in the code and then once you finish the step, you come back and go into full screen again and I'll give you time uh, to, to do each step. So that's basically how it works. OK, so oh, we've 37 logged in. So uh, I hope everyone is ready. I can see some people are working through the steps already. That's no problem. You can come along with me at my pace, my slow pace, or if you want to go ahead and work at your own pace, that's no problem. OK, so let's get going. So the very first step is just to open up the Arcade uh, Make Code website. So if you click on the link, it'll open up the website. And then we, we want to just click on the new project button. So this big um, button here. So I'm going to call it Mine Dino. Um, so you give your project a name, T-Rex Jump, Dino Jump, Chrome Game, whatever you want to call it, whatever makes sense to you. Uh, once you've done that, come back and mark the step as done. And then we will move on. So in the meantime, while I'm letting people do that, will I, oh, now I'll set up my, my other screen in a second. Um, okay. So let me just call out some of the people, uh, our coders, while we're just waiting for people to do step number one. So we've got OK Fox, 
uh, Flower123, Dejack, Plaque, Honey Badger, MF83, Ruby Red, Coder1234, Jimbo19-20 Pro, Albert, Alberto1, Luna, uh, Jack, uh, Test, Leandria, Codan, Tom, Starvel, uh, Munch, Munch, Kin, uh, that's a tough one to say, uh, J Space, don't think I've missed anyone, Erica, Star Behan, Rosie, so you're all very welcome. Um, and as you can see, some people are using their React button. So if you're again, if you're new to Codealongs, if anytime you want to give a green thumbs up or red thumbs down or any of our kind of uh, React buttons, you can click on those and it'll just go into the feed there. Just a bit of fun. Um, okay, so let me see. We have 30 coders have completed step number one. So we'll move on to step number two. And step number two, we're going to actually create the map of uh, where the dyno will run through. So if I click on here, so what we're going to do is, sorry, first of all, we are going to add uh, two pieces of code. So we're going to set the background color to a kind of sky blue. So that'll just kind of cover in the background of, of our of our game. And then we're going to create a, a tile map. So that's going to actually create the map of what of where the dyno will run through. So if you want to go into full screen, I'll show you how to do this. So let me zoom in on the toolbox. So I'm going to go into the scene to a box. And first of all, I'm going to get a set background color two. I'll put that in there. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to choose a kind of sky blue color for there. Oh, why didn't that go in? There we go. And next, I'm going to go back into the scene toolbox and get a set tile map two block and put it in here. And here's where we can design our tile map. So what we want to do is we want to set the width and the height of it. So let me zoom out, there we go. So down the very bottom left here, here, let me put on my, my little halo around my mouse. So down the bottom left here, we have the width and the height. So what we want to do is set it to 100 width and height eight. I think that's what the instruction said. Yeah, 100 width and height 8. And what you can see is that makes a big, long rectangular map. And then we want to uh, put in the ground. So if you choose a kind of ground tile and just draw it all the way along the bottom, very easy. And then just choose some other tile. Let me get rid of my head. So choose some other tile um, that's different to the ground and put it maybe at the end. And that's basically the tile you need to reach to uh, for when you're finished the game uh, or finished the level. And then finally in this step, we want to set the ground tiles to be walled. So if you've, if you've done arcade projects before, you'll know that when you set something as a wall, a uh, sprite can, cannot go through it because it's a wall. So, um, so if you click on the wall uh, tool here, so it's a kind of like 3D wall, and this will just kind of put a kind of pink uh, square where you put your mouse. And what you want to do is just draw the same all the way along where you put in your, gr your ground tiles. So now that means when, so if this is a ground tile and it's set as a wall, when the sprite goes on it, it won't be able to go through it. So that's why we set it as a wall. So if you click on done, and that's what you need to do for this step. So. I'm going to mark mine as done. So you're going to go into the scene toolbox and get a set background color two block and choose maybe, uh, well, choose whatever color you want. I chose a light blue kind of sky color and that just sets the background. And then we're going to go back into the scene toolbox and get a set tile map two block and drag that in and put it inside the on start. And this is where you're going to design your, your tile, or so your map. So again, we're going to change the width and the height. So width 100 down here and height 8. And that's a nice long one, nice long map to run through. And then if you uh, choose some sort of ground tile, you can decide which one you want to, for the tile of your ground and draw it all the way along the ground, all the way along the bottom. 
choose a different tile uh, and put some put some at the ends and that's your kind of goal where you want to reach and then finally choose the wall tool the draw walls tool and draw all the ground tiles set them as walls and then click on done okay so how are we doing we have 22 coders i've done that so far so i'll give it a little bit more time and while i do let me set up my screen a bit better There we go. So when I go into chat, I should see. Yep, here we go. Okay, great. So we have 25, let me move up a little bit. 25 coders have completed step number two. Out of, we have 37 logged in and then we have 14 or more people joining us. So if you're, if you're new to joining our code alongs, you're very welcome. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, so the way we work it is we just work down through it step by step. I'll demonstrate a step and then if you want to go ahead and do it and then come back. And if you want to go ahead and uh, work, work away ahead of me, that's no problem. And if, if I'm going a little bit too fast for you, again, that's no problem as well. Just do it at your own pace, um, at your own speed. All the instructions are, are there on the screen. So if I go to here, so all the steps are here. It has all the information you need to know on how to make the project. Uh, the project stay up there so you have all day, tomorrow, or whenever you want to finish it. And at the end, once we're finished our broadcast, we'll put, put the video up here in the little YouTube box so you can even watch it back. Okay, so we have 27 coders have completed draw uh, the map step number two so I'll just give maybe just another 30 seconds just for people to finish and I'll get a drink of water in the next step what we're going to do is design our dino sprite so the actual character that's going to run through our map run through the game we're going to design uh, our dino and then we're going to uh, set some uh, we're going to set the dino up to, to program the, the dinosaur for what it's going to do. So we're going to make it fall down. So gravity uh, is going to be in our game. So it'll fall down uh, until it hits the ground or lands on the ground. And then we're going to make it move to the right. So it's going to constantly move through the game. Um, and then we're going to make the camera follow the sprite. So when the, so if we don't do that, the sprite will just kind of run off the screen and then we, we won't see the dino again. But if we set the camera to follow the dino, it'll follow the dino through the map. Okay, so we've 29 coders. I've completed step number two. So I'm gonna move on to step number three. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag in a set my sprite to um, block and we're gonna choose or we're gonna design our dinosaur. Then we're gonna set the AY, which is the acceleration uh, Y, so for how fast it falls down on the Y axis. So remember Y is, is up and down, X is left and right. And then we're gonna set the velocity, so that how fast it moves to the right on the X axis. And so that's the VX, and then we're gonna set the camera to follow the sprite. Okay. So if you want to come into full screen, if you're following along with me, I'll show you what we need to do. So we are going to go into the sprites toolbox and get a set my sprite to block and put it in the on start. Uh, and we're going to leave it as a type player. You can have different types of sprites, but this one is fine to leave as player. I'm going to click on, I'll do that again, click on the gray box in here and it'll let me design my dino sprite. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a very basic kind of dinosaur sprite, um, like so, so we put his kind of claws and then his feet down here. So I'm not gonna spend too much time uh, designing this sprite because we wanna get this done in, in the hour that we have. So I'm just doing something quite basic. I can always come back later on and make it a little bit better, add in more details uh, to my dinosaur sprite. But for now, I'm gonna keep it quite basic and I'll put in a little eyeball, there we go, and click on done. 
and you'll see my dinosaur sprite in in the block now and you'll see the dinosaur appear here and um, so when you are going to be designing your dinosaur sprite um, I wouldn't spend too much time making sure it's absolutely perfect. Just get something that kind of looks good and works for now and you can always come back later on if you want to and um, improve it. Okay, so then I'm going to go back into the sprites toolbox and I'm going to get a set my sprite x to zero block. And I'll zoom in. I'm going to change x to be acceleration y, so a y. And what did we say? We're going to set that to 400. So set that to 400. So that'll make the sprite, that'll make the sprite fall down. You'll see there. So like a kind of gravity effect. And um, then I can bring in the exact same block again. So set my sprite x to zero. And this time we're going to get the velocity x, the vx. And we set that to 100 and that will make my sprite move to the right. So again, we'll see here, once it reloads, it moves to the right, but you'll see it goes off the screen. Um, so we need to uh, make the camera follow it. So if I go into scene, the scene toolbox, and right the way down the bottom, there's camera follow sprite, and then my sprite, because that's the name of the variable that we're storing our sprite in. in, in. So now, when you'll see that the camera follows my dinosaur as it moves along. So if you want to go ahead and do that step, step number three. So there's a fair few steps in there, so I'll give people uh, time to do that. So you're going to drag in from the sprite toolbox a set my sprite to block, and then you're going to go in and design, use the editor to design your dino sprite, your T-Rex. It doesn't have to be a T-Rex if you want a different type of dinosaur or different type of character, you put in what you want. Um, but again, don't spend too much time getting it absolutely perfect now because then you might miss the rest of the, uh, the instructions in this lesson in the project. So just do something that works for the moment and then uh, you, can, you can always come back and improve upon it uh, later on. So once you've designed your dyno and you're finished with that, you're going to go into the sprites toolbox again and get to set my sprite x to zero block. But you can change the x to be a y, so acceleration y, and we set that to 400. And again, that pulls the dinosaur down, so it acts like gravity. And then you're going to go in and get the same block again, set my sprite x to zero but you're gonna change it to VX, velocity X, and uh, change the number to be 100, and that'll make the sprite move to the right. And then finally, into the scene toolbox, I will get a camera follow sprite, my sprite, and that will make the camera track or follow your sprite as it moves along through your map. Okay, so I can see that 17, um, Okay, thank you. I can see that uh, 17 coders have completed that step. So well done, I'll give some more time for everyone. So while we're waiting, I'll try and see if I can pick out some new names of people that have logged in. So Vin Win, um, thank you, and you delivered the post. Um, so Vin Win, um, we are very welcome, Ailish. So I'm just going to see any other coders. Cute cutie that I didn't call out at the start. Um, I'll call out now. Uh, Maraid, Matteo. And I don't think there's anyone else new. If there's anyone else new that comes in, JSpace, I'll try and call you out as I see you come in. Uh, Rosie, I think. I'm not sure if I called you out earlier on. Okay, so we're still at 17 coders have completed uh, step number three. So let's just look ahead to step number four. We're going to make a jump. Step number five, we are going to add the cactuses, cacti, cactuses. I must actually find out what is the plural of cactus. Um, we're going to detect hitting a cactus so that the, the object of the game is to jump over them. So if you crash into one, if you touch a cactus, then it's going to be game over. 
and um, we're going to step number seven we're going to keep the score so we're going to add points uh, give you points as you move as you last longer in the game and number eight is going to be winning the game or getting to the end goal um, number nine if we have time we're going to try and animate the dinosaur so uh, his or her little feet are moving as as they move through the course and then yeah, that's step number nine and, nine and ten. And then number 11, we'll talk about maybe what we could do and add into the game uh, if we have time. OK, so we are at 22 coders have created the dino sprite. So I'll give just maybe no one more minute before we move on. So again, don't uh, don't get too detailed or, or spend too much time designing your dino sprite at the moment. Put in something that kind of looks good and will work for now and you can always come back and improve on it and add in all those little extra details that you want to um, so we're up to 23 coders okay so what time are we at we're 20 minutes gone so i'll just give a little bit more time so people uh, c can finish step number three because there is a fair few steps in it we are creating the dino sprite so we're creating a variable called my sprite and if you remember from our previous code alongs a variable is something that remembers something or stores something so a variable can be the score in a game or your lives and it remembers what the number is or a name or it can actually even store a whole sprite so we're creating a variable called my sprite and we're storing the sprite, the dino sprite in there. And then we can kind of interact with that variable so we can set the acceleration of it. So the acceleration of our sprite, uh, the velocity, and then set the camera to follow it. Okay, so we're gonna move on. Of 26 coders have completed that step. So I'm gonna move on to step number four. If I'm going too fast for you, don't worry, just take your time and work through the steps at your own speed. As I said, all our code along projects remain up on our site so you can always come back and work on them in your own time okay so we're going to make the uh, the dinosaur jump so let me show you a little animation here so just to jump up when we press the a button or it'll actually be the, the space bar on your keyboard um, so what we're going to do is say on a button pressed and again this will work for your 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 space key on your keyboard we're going to um, we're going to set the velocity y so that's the velocity going up to minus 200 so if you set it as a minus figure it makes it go up if you set it as a positive figure it makes it go down so we're going to make it go up and then the if i go back up here this acceleration will actually start working on it and start pulling it back down so that means the dinosaur will just go up for for maybe a second or two and then get pulled back down to the ground uh, we're going to play a sound jump and very importantly we're only going to do all this we're going to put this inside an if block we're going to say if your sprite is hitting the, uh, a wall at the bottom because you shouldn't be able once you're mid-air you can't jump off you've nothing to push off so you can only jump when you're touching something when you're touching the ground you can jump once you're mid-air you've nothing to push off and jump and that's why we do this check here if my sprite is hitting the wall bottom then we'll play the sound jump and make it jump okay enough talk let's let's add in this code so i'm going to move this to the right so I have a bit more space i'm going to go into the controller toolbox and get the second block here on a button pressed and bring that in to just plop it in anywhere it doesn't connect to anything it just goes in on its own then we're going to go into the logic toolbox and get an if then so the very first block so an if then is for us testing something testing a condition to see if it's true or false and what we're going to test is uh, if the sprite is hitting the bottom wall uh, so it's hitting a wall at the bottom of the sprite which means the where the legs of the dino would be so i think that's in the scene toolbox yeah it's down here in the scene toolbox there's a collisions section and in here it says is is my sprite hitting wall left i'm going to drag that in let me zoom in i'm going to put it inside this little gap of the if then 
move it across, and then I'm going to change it to be bottom. So it says, if is my sprite hitting wall bottom then, and what we want to do is play a sound. So I think there's a jump. Yeah, there's a jump up sound here. And then we're going to say, is it set? Yep, yeah, set my sprite. So again, we're going to get a set my sprite x to zero, but this time we're going to change it to vy. Sorry, I keep on going back just to check I'm, I'm putting in the right code. So vy, and we zoom in, minus 200. So on an A button pressed, if is my sprite hitting wall bottom, then play the sounds, jump up, and we're going to set the vy, uh, velocity y, of my sprite to minus 200. And let's see if this works. When I press the A button, it jumps. Here, I'll refresh. Or if I press my space key, it jumps up and it plays that sound. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and do step number four, uh, if you're coming along with me, oh, I got some legendary hockey sticks. That's a cool badge. I've never seen that one before. Okay, and I'll see. So I see 23 coders have already finished. So does coders working ahead in their at their own speed? Well done. And if you're coming along with me, just take your time and uh, work work through each step one by one, and you'll you'll be able to get the project done. Even if you don't get it done in this hour of the code along, you know uh, you can always save your project and come back to it tomorrow and work on it again. And that's often what a lot of people do. It's what I do. If I'm making a game. I might, you know, spend an hour working on the game one day and then just save it. And then you might even come up with different ideas later on in the day or, you know, uh, during the week. And you can come back and open up your project again and work on it a little bit more, make it a little bit better. Um, and that's how all games um, and different websites and, and things that are made with code, that's how it all works. It's just making things bit by bit, better by better and building on what you've already done. Okay, so I'll just give a little bit more time for that. So you're going to uh, go into the controls toolbox, get an on a button pressed block, which is the kind of orange block, looks like a C at the start. Then you're going to go into the logic toolbox and get an if then, and that goes inside the on a button pressed block. And then you're going to go into the scene toolbox and scroll down and get a is my sprite hitting wall left block, and that goes in the little gap of the if then but you're going to change it from left to be to bottom so it means if the bottom of your sprite is hitting a wall which so it means if it's touching the ground that's when you want to let it jump if again if it's mid-air you shouldn't be able to jump and that's what this if will only this if will only run the code the jump code if you're touching the ground that's why we put it in so then you get, go into the sounds toolbox and get a, a play sounds jump up um, or play sound, I think it's badding, it comes in as, and then you can change that to jump up. And then back into the sprites toolbox, get a set my sprite x to zero, but change x to be vy, velocity y, and change x to, to be minus 200. And once that's done, once and this is what you should do at the end of each step, is you go and you actually test if your code works. Um, because sometimes you'll do it, and it happens to me quite a lot of the time, is I go and test, I run my code, and it doesn't work properly, and I have to go go and look at my code and figure out what I did wrong. So that happens quite often, but it happens to everybody. And that's why we test our code, it's just to make sure it works. You could add in all the code, cross your fingers, and hope it'll work perfectly at the end when you pl press play, but chances are it won't, um, at least for me anyway. Okay, so I'll give just a little bit more time. I can see 27 coders have completed step number four. So I'll give you a little bit more time for that. And then we're going to move on to step number five. And that's just, we're going to add in the cactuses. Actually, what is the plural of cactus? Okay, I'm going to actually Google this. Plural of cactus. So... Uh, Merriam Webster dictionary. So, oh, pop ups go away, pop ups. Let me just search for plural. Oh, there we go. Plural is cacti or cactuses. 
also cactus. So for the plural of cactus, we can say cacti, cactuses, or even just cactus on its own. Okay, so we've all learned something today. Um, okay, actually, if you want me to say cacti as the plural, uh, give a uh, give green thumbs up. If you want to me to say cactuses, give a red thumbs down. And that way I'll, I'll count them here quickly and we'll, that's how we'll proceed with calling the cacti or cactuses. So green thumbs up for cacti, red thumbs down for cactuses. Let's see if anyone even wants to vote. J space cacti, test cacti, honey badger cacti, coder 123, Eric. Okay, it's pretty unanim unanimous. Okay, Fox, green thumbs up, right. <laughs> uh, we'll go with cacti. Okay, so we'll move on to step number five, add the cacti. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, click on the set tile map to block. Um, and we're going to go in and add in, paint a new tile, um, a cactus tile, and then we're going to uh, put that tile in where we want it. So if I switch across to here, I'm going to click on the set Mo tile map to block. So it opens up here. And now I want to actually paint, create my own tile. So I'm going to click on my tiles and click on the plus button here. Um, and then I'm just going to uh, design a cactus. So I think I'll go with a kind of orange uh, color just because the green is already taken by my dino. So I'm just kind of going to do a, a kind of classic tree pronged cactus like so. Fairly basic. And click on done. And then all I'm going to do is just put the cactus in, in different places in my map. So some of them I'll actually double up. So if I zoom in, you might see what I'm doing there. I'm going to double up. Um, so it's a, a bigger jump. Some I might kind of put close together. This is going to be a little, little bit of uh, testing out to see if it works or not, uh, maybe I might run through through the game and it might be just too hard, or maybe it might be too easy. Um, but that's why we test. That's why we test our code. Okay, so I've added in my cactus and I've um, put in, um, so I created my, my, uh, my cactus, or yeah, my cacti tiles, or tile, and now I've, I've also put it in, put, use the cactus tile to dot the cactuses throughout uh, the tile map. And then I'll, I'll kind of test to see if it works, if, if, if I've spaced them out in a good way or, or a bad way and I need to make any changes. So if you want to go ahead and do step number five, if you haven't already. So again, you're going to click on the set tile map to block um, and that's going to open up the tile editor. Then you're going to click on my tiles and then there's a little plus button and what that does is lets you design your own tile so if you choose a color and, and the pen the pencil tool and draw a cactus and click on ok and then once you've created that cactus tile just put the cactus at different points throughout your map um, and then click on done and then you can even give a quick test so if you click on refresh on the uh, on the little simulator you can kind of run through your map and see where your cactuses your cacti are i can see that i've made some of them uh, maybe a little bit too hard so i'm going to actually erase a couple of mine uh, just so they're spaced out a little bit more uh, just so i can get get to the end of the map i might come back later on and make it a little bit better um, okay, so how are we doing? So we have 22 coders have completed step number five, add the cacti. So I'll just give a bit more time on that. I can see some new people joining in. Tom, you're very welcome. 
if I missed anyone else. I don't think so. Uh, H. Giyoshi, you're very welcome to our code along. Okay, I'll just give a bit more time. So let me see, we're five minutes past 12. What do we have left to do? So step number six, we're going to de detect when we hit a cactus. Um, that's not too much code. Uh, step number seven, we're going to keep score. Just a, a few more blocks we need to add in to set the score to zero and then to add score as you move, as the game progresses, you'll get, you'll, uh, get points. And then step number eight is to win the game. So we're going to detect when you hit the, the tiles at the end. So remember, we, we kind of put in a tile, different tiles right at the end. We're going to detect when we hit those and that'll win us the game. And then if we have time, we'll do step number nine, which is to create an animation. So it's to try and animate the little T-Rex feet. Okay, so we're up to 25 coders. 26 have done step number five. So maybe just give it a little bit more time. Again, and, I, and you're probably tired of me saying this, but I think it is an important point for these code alongs. When you're designing the, to the map, your dinosaur sprite, your, cacti your cacti sprite, um, just do something yeah, pretty good that works for now. Don't spend, you know, really long uh, or a really large amount of time getting it absolutely perfect. Just get something that works for now and then uh, come back to us. Uh, and then you can always come back in later on and spend that extra time getting it exactly the way you want it to improve it. Okay, so we are up to 27 coders have completed that step. So I'm gonna move on to step number six. So we're gonna detect when we hit a cactus. So there's ready-made blocks in Arcade. This is why Arcade is so good for games. It has blocks uh, that are really uh, quick and easy to use. So we're gonna add in two blocks. The first is gonna say on sprite of kind player. So that's what our dino is. It's a sprite that is a kind player. When that overlaps and we're gonna choose the cactus tile, uh, at location. The location doesn't matter for us, it's just in the block, in this block, uh, code block, we can use it in different circumstances. We don't need to use it now. So on sprite of kind player overlaps with the cactus block. We're gonna say game over, and we're gonna do a little slash effect. So you can do different effects on the screen. We're gonna do a slash effect. Um, so quite easy. Okay, so switching across to arcade, and I'm gonna go into the scene toolbox. And in there's a tiles section in the scene toolbox. And in here it has on sprite of kind player overlaps with a particular type of tile at location. So I'm gonna drag that in. I'll put that down here. Scroll down a little bit. So here I wanna choose my cactus tile. So I click on a little white arrow, zoom in. Click on this little white arrow. It shows me all the tiles that are used in my map. So pretty easy, click on the cactus. Then I'm gonna go into the game toolbox and there's a game over block in here with a kind of lose win toggle. So we're gonna lose, leave it at lose. You could put it to win, but we don't wanna win when you go into a character, so you lose. And if I click on the plus button here, it just gives me the other options of this block. So I can choose what type of effect, which you'll see there. It's a confetti effect, uh, but I wanna do the slash one, which is, uh, a kind of better effect for a game over. Confetti is a celebration. I don't, yeah, there we go, the slash effect. So if you want to go ahead and do step number six, so you're going to go into the scene toolbox and get an on sprite of kind player overlaps with a type of tile. So bring that in and then into the game over toolbox and get a, oh, sorry, not the game over toolbox, the game toolbox and get a, oh, I'll stop this so it doesn't keep on happening, uh, and get a game over block and bring that in. You can leave the little toggle, the little switch on lose, uh, but click on the plus and then choose what type of effect you want to happen when it's game over. So I chose a slash effect, so you saw that kind of happen on the screen when it was game over. 
uh, but you choose what you want if you want you know have a, if, if you're if you're waiting um you know for me to move on to the next one while i'm waiting for other people to, to finish the step try out different effects and, and see what you think uh, works best what what you like it's always good to kind of play around and and choose what you like um in terms of effects and different things like that so the game is kind of uh more personalized to you for how you like it you know your your own um imagination and ideas so let me see we've 19 coders have completed step number six detecting hitting a cactus and then we're going to move on to step number seven so this is where we're going to keep on keep the score but we'll wait uh, just another minute or so for people to finish sorry about the noise in the background my youngest son is getting some paper and some pens to do some drawing you done okay Okay, so we've 20 coders have so completed step number six, so I'll, I'll wait a little bit more time. Give people more time. What time? We've got 20 minutes to go. So 20 minutes, let's see, we'll be able to do the keep score. We'll be able to win the game. And we might be able to have a look at doing the animation. And um, if I don't get enough time, if we don't have enough time in this code along to do the animation, the, all the steps for how to create the animation are here in step number nine. And step number 10 shows you how to program it. So even if I don't get to show you today, um, the instructions are there if, if you're able to uh, uh, read, read through them. If you can't read through them, you can always press the play button on any of our steps. And that will actually, uh, there's audio, it'll actually read, it, read out the step to you. So, um, which is a little bit of help. Okay, so we've 22 coders have completed step number six. So again, I'll just give a bit more time before moving on to step number seven. Um, so to, today we're doing uh, just one code along. Normally on Saturdays we do two code alongs, just today we can only do one. So next Saturday we'll be back to two code alongs. Um, the first one is for six to nine year olds, though anyone can join in, and that will be at half nine to half ten next Saturday. And then we will do another code along for 10 plus year olds. So anyone over 10, though saying that, if you want anyone that wants to join in, it's more than welcome. And that code along will be at 11 next Saturday. So back to two code alongs next Saturday. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the keeping score. So step number seven. So to keep score, we just need to do two things. Number one, at the start, we want to set the score to be zero. So when you start a game, because you might play the game and you get a score of 87. And then when you restart the game, you don't want the score to stay at 87. You want it to go back to zero. So the next player that's playing the game it starts at zero for them and then they get their score. So that's the first thing we need to do. So we're just going to add in a set score to zero inside the on start. So that sets it up at the start. And then we're going to get an on game update every 100 milliseconds. So this will run, this code will run 10 times each second. And what we're going to say is change score by one. So you should get 10 points for each second that you make it through the course. Okay, so let's add them in. So switching across to scratch, I'm going to go into the info toolbox and I'm going to get a set score to zero. And that goes inside. Let me scroll up. That goes inside the on start. So set score to zero. And then let me create a little bit of space. Uh, go into the game toolbox. And the second one down is on game update every 500 milliseconds. So that's every half a second because there's 1000 milliseconds in a second. So 500 is half a second. I'm going to change this. Let me zoom in. I'm going to click on the little black arrow here and change it to be 100 ms so every 100 milliseconds what i want to happen is back into info change score by one so now when i play the game 
you'll see my score up here. So I got up to 12. Let me refresh and do it again. Oh, not very good at playing my own game. There, I got, I got up to 31. So that's the score um, working away there. So if you want to go ahead and do step number seven, and that's detecting the score or adding in the score. So you're going to go into the, uh, is it the game toolbox? No, the info toolbox and get a set score to zero. And that goes inside the on start. So maybe after the camera follows sprite block, set score to zero. And then into the game, sorry, into the, sorry, into the info toolbox, you'll get the uh, set score to zero and then into the game toolbox to get the on game update every 500 milliseconds change that to be 100 milliseconds and then back into the info toolbox and get a change score by one and put that inside and once that's done um, try it out in your simulator make sure that you see up the top right hand side you should see your score It'll start out at zero and as you move through the game as the game progresses you will see that the score go up you'll see the points rack up okay so 19 coders have done that okay i can see a red thumbs down from h Gyashi. so i'll just try and see what step h Gyashi is on i don't see um okay so you've completed step number four make a jump make a jump yeah so if, if you are so h gashi just take your own t uh, take your time work your way through uh, the steps if you have somebody that can help you that's brilliant um you'll see the you'll see all the code uh, in each step that you need to add and um, we'll show you like a little animation sometimes of where you need to go to get them and how you build the code so if it isn't working if you test your code and it's not quite working just go back to the step that you last did and check the code is the same as your code so go back uh, between the two different tabs between the instructions and the project tab and just check that your code is the same um, and normally you'll find there's one small thing that you might have put in incorrectly or put in the wrong place um, and, and that should fix it so just take your time um, we all make mistakes I make them all the time um, and that's how you fix them you just go back um, and check that you've added them in uh, correctly and all the information is in the instructions so just take your time comparing the instructions and your code Okay, so that's keeping score. We're then going to go on to winning the game, but I'll just wait to, uh, to, till a few more people have completed step number seven. So you will remember that we put in some goal uh, tiles, some tiles right at the end so that were different from the ground tiles. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, detect when our sprite touches one of them. So it's the exact same uh, that we we detected that our sprite uh, overlapped or touched a cactus sprite, one of our cacti sprites. Um, so we're going to do the same thing for whatever sprite you put in at the end. I put in these kind of green bushes type tile. So I'm going to detect if my player my sprite touches one of them overlaps with one of them i'm going to say game over again but this time i'm going to say win and i'm going to do a confetti effect okay so we're up to 20 coders have completed step number seven so i am going to move on to step number eight and um, so it's quite easy there is an easy way of doing this you can drag in these blocks again the on sprite of kind player overlaps uh, and the game over or you can just duplicate so what I'm going to do is just right click on the, the kind of group of uh, code blocks I want to duplicate or copy so I'm going to click on duplicate and it puts in a second uh, copy there you'll notice that excuse me you'll notice that the second one the copied one here is it has a kind of ghost effect that's because I can't have two of these the exact same 
because of what the code won't know which one to, which one do I run uh, because both of them say sprite of kind player overlaps a cactus but once I change this to my goal tile which is this green bushes you'll see that it comes in now these are different so it, this one doesn't have the ghost effect so what we want to say is game over but we want to win so I'm going to toggle this to win and I say a confetti actually I'm going to go with smiles today so a smiles effect um, and now I'm going to try and oh, I'm going to try and see if I can get to the end pressure is on now so what I want to test here is that when I oh <laughs> that didn't work um, w when I got to the end uh, I wanted to see if it actually uh, uh, the, the game over win worked what I actually going to do is to test this I'm going to put one of these tiles here I'm just going to put them there and I'm going to restart and this will let me test not sure what happened there there we go there we go so game over win and I get the smiles effect so I'm going to mark my step as done if you want to go ahead and do step number eight. Oh, I got an umbrella beach a legendary it's going to be a nice weekend uh, this weekend so maybe everyone might get to a beach if you can okay so I'm actually going to go back in now and fix my map and take out those uh, those kind of end tiles I just put into test I don't want those anymore um, and I'll need to do, uh, practice a bit more <laughs> to be able to get to the end okay so that's step number eight winning the game so I can see 17 coders have completed that already and um, so and we've eight minutes left okay so I'll give a couple more minutes and then maybe I just might demonstrate how to um, create an animation and then use it so I'll give a couple more minutes for people to do step number eight and then I'll do the animation uh, and then we'll finish up at the end So I can see some people have completed the project. So well done if you have completed the project. Um, actually, what I'll do now is while, while we're waiting, um, you know, just giving some more type, time for people to finish step number eight, we'll just talk about the competition. So uh, in all of our code alongs, what we want to do is get you to the end. So you, we want you to complete the project, whether you complete it in the hour, whether it takes you a little bit longer, that's no problem, but you complete the project. So you, you learn something new about coding uh, and creating games and different interactive stories and things. And then once you have completed the project, we always want you to try and put in your own twist, your own idea, use your imagination to think, how can I make this game better? Or wouldn't it be really cool if it did this or that? So we want you to do something, whether it's one idea or two ideas, and improve the game. And uh, what we do is we choose uh, w one of the entries and how you enter, actually, I should say. I'll scroll up to the top. Uh, how you enter is in our Codiverse, which is our kind of uh, where everyone kind of shares their work. You can share a project. Click on share now. Um, and it'll show you how to share an arcade project. You basically get a link. And once you get the link, you copy it into this box. You put in your name, whatever you are, sorry, the name of the project. Uh, if you want to give it a little bit of a description about what you changed in it, what, what you thought, uh, 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 what you did with your project and submit it. And these go into, uh, we can see Erica already here has submitted her dino run. Uh, it just takes a second to load up. So, oh, cool. And she's actually done um, an animation. So I am going to react to that. So if you want to, once we're finished the project, once you're finished the project, if you want to put your own idea into it, and then if you want to submit it into the Codyverse, we'll choose uh, one, uh, one of the projects. And next Saturday, we'll announce who wins uh, the micro bit, and we'll send it out. Okay, so six minutes to go. Let me scroll down to step number nine. 
Um, okay, so this is what we're gonna, what we need to do to create an animation is we need to create an animation asset. That's just like a file. So we need to create an animation asset or file, and then we're gonna use, there's a code block for using that animation. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is, let me just refresh. So I'm gonna click into assets. I'm gonna copy uh, the dinosaur tile, and then I'm gonna edit it, okay. So where am I? I'll close down the Codiverse, back into here. I'm going to click on Assets up the top right here. And I'm going to choose Select. Click on Stop so that doesn't keep on happening. I'm going to select my dinosaur tile. And then I'm going to click on Copy. And that just creates a copy of it in the computer's memory. Then I'm going to click on New Asset here. And here I can say image, tile, tile map, or animation. I want to choose animation. And then I want to uh, paste. So to paste my copied dino tile, I'm pressing Control and V together. At the same time, hold down Control, C, T, or L. It should be there in the bottom left of your keyboard. Hold it down and then press V once. And that pastes in what you've copied. Okay, so I see it here. So I've got what this is my first frame because in animation you've got different frames and each frame just moves slightly. And when you move through them quickly, that's what an animation is. So I'm talking through this quite quickly because we've only a few minutes left, but uh, th uh, th this is what you do. So we've got one frame here with the, with the dinosaur sprite. I'm going to uh, duplicate the current frame by clicking this little copy button here. So I now got two of them. I'm going to choose the second one and what I want to do is uh, rub out, erase the legs. So there we go, erase them like that. You can actually even click this layer tool down here and it'll kind of just show you a ghost effect of of the, the, the other frame and what it looks like. So I can kind of see where they were. I'm going to choose the green color and I'm just going to do kind of shorter legs like that and that's my animation so it's just going to hop up and down you can maybe do something better where one goes up one goes down if you want i'm going to click on done and there's my asset there and uh, my animation so now i can go back to my blocks and let me just check the code so down here in the on start i'm going to use the animate uh, code block, I think, is that in loops? Might be in advanced. Oh, I'm going to click on the advanced uh, to get the advanced toolboxes and then click on animation. And then it's the very first one here. I'm going to put that inside the on start. So let me kind of move this around a little bit. So that's after going inside the on start at the end. So animate my sprite. And I have to click here to choose. Uh, my animation so I'm going to go into my assets and there's my animation here click it once and then click on done down the bottom right here and that goes in there and we want to say interval every 200 milliseconds that's fine and then we want it to loop so if I go into full screen here uh, and play you should be able to see the little animation of the feet Oh, I should have animated the tail as well. As you can see, the tail is just kind of static, staying in the same place. Let's see if I can get, oh, let's say, let's see if I can get to the end. I can't. Um, so that is how you add in a, an animation. So i sorry, I did need to kind of rush through that a little bit quickly, and um, just because we're kind of out of time. But all the instructions for how to do it are here. Uh, and then the block, the code block to use it is here. And again, we'll show you, if you go in here, it'll show you, go into advanced animation and what block to, to put in there. Um, so, so that's the project for today. That's the code along. Thank you very much for everyone for joining us. Um, here I have my, I have a little Homer Simpson gift to put in. Um, Woohoo! So well done everyone for joining in today. If you're still working through the project, brilliant, keep on going. Um, 
all the information is there, all the steps are there. So just take your own time. Everyone has different kind of skill levels and, and abilities for all different things. Um, so just take your time. This is all about learning um, coding and learning new things in coding and having a little bit of fun as well. So take your time and work your way through it. Uh, I see Code Dan has given a red thumbs down. So if you're if if you're having this, like uh, any little problems with your coding, you know it's not working. As I said earlier on, just go back to the step that you did, uh, check the code. So go go back and forth between the instructions and the actual code you've put in yourself, um, and see if you can figure out. Uh, you know if you might have something in the wrong place. Um, and then lastly, just to say that if you want to finish the project, put your own idea into it and then submit it into our Codiverse um, for any of our members, um, we will be giving away a microbit. Microbits are little programmable computers. They've got Bluetooth, radios, speakers, compass, uh, microphone, LEDs, buttons, uh, an accelerometer, a thermometer. They're, you can do so much with them. They're really, really cool. And we give one away. Uh, in each of our code alongs. So if you want to finish this project, put your own idea, your own twist in it, and then submit it into our Codiverse, we'll put the page together that lists out all the uh, the, the entries, and then we'll choose one at our next um, code along, which is next Saturday. So next Saturday, six to nine year olds at half nine in the morning, and then 10 plus year olds at 11 o'clock in the morning. So I hope everyone enjoyed that today and have a good weekend, have a good week and we'll see you soon. Bye.